In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the various concepts surrounding measurement in science and medicine. We have to remember that the, the matter is in all size scales. It can be macroscopic, and so something that we can easily see with, with the naked eye, something like an adult person. Or we can get down to the microscopic level, or, which we could only see with a microscope. Things like uh, or actually a drop of blood would still be macroscopic. We can see that. But a red blood cell at two to five micrometers, we certainly wouldn't see without a microscope. Or then down to a hemoglobin molecule at 5.5 nanometers, we wouldn't be able to see. And then all the way down to the atomic scale of a single atom. And so we're, we're going to take a look at just some of the, the various different uh, concepts surrounding um, our various measurement tools. We have to remember always that measurements involve a number and a unit. And that's key. That is very important. This isn't the, num the numbers that we work with in this course are not the same as numbers that you might work with in a math class where it's just a number and you're going to perform some math mathematical operations to it and that's it. Our numbers represent a measurement of some sort and that measurement is meaningless without a unit attached to it. Quick funny story, I find funny anyway. When I was in grad school, I was out for a hike with, with just a couple of good friends. Uh, incidentally, they were, I, I grew up in Maine, went out to Montana for grad school. And my best friends out there ended up being a couple who were from Vermont and New Hampshire, respectively, and now live in Vermont. So go figure. But anyway, I'm out for a hike with, with the two of them. And one of them mentioned that they wanted to maybe go for a hike that Saturday, or a new hike they wanted to look at, and if we were interested. And so I said, sure, but how long is it? Because I knew that I had to get into the lab, do a little bit of research on, on Saturday that week. And so I said, how long is the hike? And she said, oh, it's not bad. It's like five. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Five hour hike. I just, I, I'm not sure that I can squeeze that in and still get to the lab in time because I don't really feel like getting up at you know six, five or six in the morning either. It's a Saturday. And she's like, oh, I don't know. It's a quick little five mile hike. We'll be done within a couple hours. It's nothing. And so then we had a good laugh because there we were, chemistry grad students, all of us, teaching some undergrad chemistry courses always talking with our students at that point about how important units are, yet we just made the classic mistake. She threw the number out of five out there, assumed that I knew she meant miles, I interpreted it as hours, led to a little hilarious misunderstanding on the side of the mountain. Um, true story, I mean, that really did occur. And we really did chuckle about it, because it, 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 but it helped demonstrate for us once again how important units really are. A number is meaningless without a unit. And we're going to look at some tools actually a little bit later on, how we can use units to even help us get right answers. When we're looking at common systems of measurement, the two most common are the English and the metric. We will absolutely be using the metric system. Science uses the metric system. It just does. The base units are the meter from... Oh, here we go, see, there's that mouse issue again. The meter for measuring length, the gram for measuring mass, the second for measuring time, and the calorie for energy, but we're not gonna work much with, with energy for this class. Length, so like I like mentioned, the, so just various, uh, various things that we might measure. The length of something with the meter as that base unit, the mass of something with the gram, we might also want to measure the volume of something, how much space is occupied. And again, we're not going to really work much with energy, so I'll just skip over that. And so, as we, as we mentioned, measurements can have a huge wide range in which, in which we might find them. And so it's convenient for us to have a way to express really, really, really large units, or really, really, really large measurements, and really, really, really small measurements. And so measurements that are much larger or much smaller than those base units. And so for instance, we have distance displayed here. And so a distance, and this obviously isn't, isn't relative because it's um, just on your screen, so it depends on the size of your screen, but we have a millimeter. And so that milli means one thousandth. 
a millimeter is one one thousandth of a meter. There are 1,000 millimeters in one meter. Centimeters. A centimeter is one one hundredth of a meter. There are 100 centimeters in one meter. Decimeters is a tenth of a meter. Meter, by the way, for reference, is about a yard. It's a little bit off, but, rough, but just about three feet. And a decimeter is one tenth of that. There are 10 decimeters in one meter. And so you are absolutely going to need to be able to do metric conversions and use metric prefixes in this course. This is the table that your book uses. And I like this table a lot. I, I've been using several different ones over the years. This one, I really, really, really like. And so, so a couple things to keep in mind with metric prefixes is that they can be used with any base unit. We can attach these to, if we're, if we're working with the units of grams, we can talk about kilograms, centigrams, milligrams, so forth. Uh, if we're talking about liters, centiliters, milliliters, kiloliters, seconds can be kiloseconds, microseconds, nanoseconds, and so forth. It doesn't matter what unit we're actually using. We can attach and use metric prefixes to any of them. And so the way that this works is we can see sort of here in the middle, this would be where our base unit is. Anything above that dividing line, these are all going to be prefixes used for quantities and for measurements that are larger than the base unit. And so I'm just gonna work with, with meters just because it's convenient for our discussion. And so 1000 meters is one kilometer. 1 million megameters, or sorry, 1 million meters is one megameter. 1 billion gigameters, sorry, I keep making that same mistake. 1 billion meters is one gigameter and so forth. Those of you who are familiar with computers, some of these might look familiar. Kilobyte, megabyte, gigabyte, terabyte. That's all that it means. A kilobyte is 1,000 bytes. Megabyte, 1 million bytes. Gigabyte, 1 billion bytes. Terabyte, 1 with 12 zeros bytes. And so we also see our multipliers in scientific notation over here. Scientific notation is also something you'll have to be familiar with. I don't think I have any slides, but let's go ahead and just bring up. I should have done this ahead of time. My apologies. Let's bring up my whiteboard here. Here we go. So scientific notation. Scientific notation is always written as a number point within whatever your decimal places may be. But the decimal point always, always, always goes after the ones spot. And so it'll always be something in the one spot point and then your other numbers. And then times, shouldn't have used X's, gets confusing but times x to or times 10 to whatever the number is. And so that's how scientific notation works. And so something for instance, like 6 million, our decimal point is right here. We would see that we would move our decimal point one, two, three, four, five, six spaces to get it to the one spot, which means that in scientific notation, this number would be six times 10 to the sixth. Same in the other direction. If I have this measurement here. My decimal point is here right now. I've got to move it one, two, three, four, five places in order to get it. So my decimal point is after the one spot. So I moved it five places. And so this measurement will be written as 1.256 times 10 to the negative fifth. Note the signs depending on where you have to move your decimal point. You're probably familiar with scientific notation. You've most likely seen it before. And so that's just a little refresher on it. Back to our metric prefixes. And so now for anything that's any quantities that are smaller than the base unit, a decimeter, like we talked about, is one tenth of a meter. So there are 10 decimeters in one meter. A centimeter is one one hundredth of a meter. A millimeter is one one thousandth of a meter and so forth. 
you will need to know all of these conversions and how to use them. There is a really good, in my opinion, resource on the website. So if we go into topic details, we're in matter of energy and measurement. If we go to the materials page there. For one, there's a great supplemental video. I would highly recommend that you watch this video as well. It gives you some, um, just some additional deeper look at metric conversions. Here's a really good informational handout that will help you as well. And we'll go through a couple examples before we're done here. But here's a good informational handout that will help you help show you how to do these. One way, uh, actually, we'll, I'll, I'll go back to the way that I recommend in just a second. But then there's also some good practice problems. And so those are some, those are some good resources on the website to help you convert and help you do metric conversions. And so let's just make this a little bit smaller. Okay, so let's say for instance, that we have 1,520, oh, what do we wanna use for units? Grams, why not? And we need to convert that to kilograms. So we can see here that kilogram, if we're going from, from our base unit here, so like this sort of, this is our base unit. We look at our exponent multiplier is a three. That three tells us that we're going to move our decimal point three spaces. Now here's where we have to think just a little bit. We can see that we're going from a smaller unit to a larger one. That means that our number is going to get smaller and I'm going to move my decimal point to the left. And our multiplier of three tells us how many places to the left. So the decimal point's here right now. I wanna move it one, two, three. Decimal point now gets moved to right there. And so I get 1.520 kilograms. Easy enough, right? If we're going the other direction, if I have 0 0.0005 seconds, and I want to convert that to milliseconds, now I'm here at my base unit with seconds. I'm going to go to milli. My multiplier here, three, shows us that I'm going to move my decimal point three spaces. And now I'm going from a, from a, a larger unit to a, or sorry, a larger measurement to a smaller one. So my number is going to get bigger, meaning that I'm going to move my decimal point now to the right. Three spaces, one, two, three. Decimal point goes right there now. And so this is going to be 0 0.5 milliseconds. And so anytime that you're moving up the chart, you're gonna move your decimal point to the left. If you're moving down the chart, move your decimal point to the right. And if you're going from one base unit to another one, Let's say you have one, two, we have that many nanograms. And for whatever reason, we need to convert that to kilograms. Same exact process. So here I'm going from nano to kilo. So I'm moving up the chart. So I know I'm gonna move my decimal point to the right. We look at our multipliers, it's gonna take me nine to get even to my base unit, and then another three to get to kilo. So I have to move my decimal point a total of 12 spaces. Hold on just a sec. That's what I thought, sorry, confused myself, been a long day. I'm moving up the charts, moving my decimal point to the left. Can't remember if that's what I said or not, but I had it mixed up in my head for a second. So I'm going up, I'm gonna move my decimal point to the left by 12 spaces. Right now my decimal point is right here. So I'm gonna move it one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Here's my new decimal point. These little humps that I left right here, those are now just going to be zeros. And so I'm going to get 0, 0, 0. These two here are the little humps that I left there. 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 kilograms. And there's my final answer. And that's how we do metric conversions. So like I said, and I don't expect you just after that, those few quick examples to, to be masters at this, use these other resources that I have for you. The info sheet talks about doing things exactly the way that I just showed you, sort of using the, that decimal point motion and decimal point movement, just according to which way you're going to be moving. So like this, like it shows you here, going up the table, we're going to move our decimal point to the left, going down the table, move our decimal point to the right, and use your multiplier here to tell you how many spaces. Metric conversions are very important because measurements that might be convenient for us to measure in or units that might be convenient for us to measure in aren't necessarily the same units that a formula is going to require for us. And so we're, we might take a measurement, for instance, in nanometers because it's convenient for us to think in terms of nanometers for that particular measurement. But maybe an equation we're going to end up using that in needs to have the, the measurement in terms of meters. So we'd have to be able to know how to convert that. Metric conversions, very, very important. This is, in my opinion, one of the, the biggest failings of our, our K through 12 education system is that we, we don't hit this nearly hard enough very early on. Um, and it should just come naturally. Again, so remembering that I taught high school for about 10 years, I tried to make this as big a part as I could. And I remember one year in particular, I, there was a foreign exchange student in my class from, I don't remember where he was from, Germany maybe, somewhere in Europe anyway. Uh, and sure enough, he was the only one who just nailed the metric. I mean, this was, this was easy to him. Just the, the same way that it's, it's natural for us to remember, oh yeah, 12 feet, there are 12 inches in a foot. Sure, 5,280 feet in a mile. Sure, though this came that naturally to him because he'd already, he's always used it. Um, anyway, that's just a little aside. Metric system is important. Learn it, know how to use it. We will be using it a fair bit throughout this semester. And that is, or throughout this summer session rather. And that is all for this video.